Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors. Today we're going to be talking about our Super Bowl camera challenge. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. A podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and being a steward of the land. Hey, if you like what these two dumbasses are doing, please hit the like button and subscribe today. Uh, welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumb Asses. Uh, today we are continuing on with our Super Bowl challenge. This is our third annual Super Bowl challenge of evaluating trail cameras. Joel, Joel, where, where do we go from here? Yeah, so in part one, Tim, the last episode, we had four four trail cameras that we put out and we spent all week testing them, right? So we've got the data's in and uh, we're going to narrow this these four down to two. Is, is the goal in this episode. So um, I think what we decided is, is we're gonna have the TASCO uh, compete against last year's champ, which is the Moultrie A700i. Uh -huh. And then the new Bushnell L20, which was the replacement to the autopilot that you manhandled and broke the latch on. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to throw you under the bus. I guess I did. Versus the A25i, which uh, Jace is like super high on and uh, came out came out in episode one and said, hey, I think this is the winner right here. The newcomer. The newcomer. So uh, one thing's for sure. Things are going to get uh, heated here and, uh, you know, we're going to come out with uh, just two cameras instead of four. So let's talk about what, what's some of our criteria that we're evaluating against. Yeah, I think... I think uh, picture quality, day and night, uh, you know, number of pictures really kind of, really we're using numbers of pictures to determine is, the, is it capable of regenerating and taking pictures quickly, battery usage, so on and so forth, right? Yep. Um, functionality is going to be kind of thrown in as a, as a tiebreaker if it comes down to it, which one has the most functionality and what, which features, and then sensitivity to distance. How are they picking up, uh, you know, birds versus deer versus we did some at 30, 60, 90 yards walking by them and, and see if uh, the cameras picked them up. All right. Did I miss any? No, I think that's it. So I think you said we were going to do the, this is the 700. Yep. And I think this is the Tasco. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was our first set yeah so um let's just go with let's go with the tasco so hey predictions uh i i think i said it in the first one you know it is what it is you're getting what you pay for it's gonna take pictures if something's in front of it but nighttime it's gonna suffer i mean you know and i said last time you can't shoot deer at night so that's kind of what i think it's gonna it's what it's gonna do as high as you were on the a25i you were Pretty beaten up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Tasco. Yeah, like I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, here, here's kind of some of the data around this. So the Tasco took, uh, we took two samples here, uh, but the Tasco took uh, two, let's, let's combine them. Yeah. Let's combine the two samples as far as image size. Um, about 450 images between the two sample sizes. Um, compared to the A700, um, just shy of a thousand. So the A700 took a lot more pictures, even though the settings were were set up that way. Um, the big one is is that the A700 we did walk bys at 30, 60, and 90 feet, and the A700 picked up picked up us walking by mm -hmm. it, and the Tasco the, for it. For the, the price and everything, it did pick up the 30 and the 60. It did not pick up the 90. And then uh, picture quality. Which is, that's, that's still pretty good at 60, 60 feet. Yeah. And Earth, I think. I think what you say is $30 or something. Right, like yeah. And, and how old is it? I'm at least five, I think. And that's the thing. I mean, I'm using it on, you know, mineral spots, you know, pinches, tight places in the narrow. I don't need it to shoot that far. So, you know, it's, it's good for that, you know. And who needs a thousand pictures, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think what's interesting is, is, and we found this 
the two previous years is unless you take these cameras and can show them against each other, yeah, you don't right. know what you don't know. Right. Right. And, and, uh, we, we, I know I had some cameras the first couple of years that I had a lot of confidence in that ended up not, I'm not having a lot of confidence anymore because now I've got cameras that are picking up deer or other things that this one wasn't mm -hmm. and you don't know. Right. So I think that's the big takeaway for me in this, this competition after three years. Yeah. You just don't know what you don't know if it, if it doesn't take the picture. Right. Now, did we, I don't know if you're going to go down this path, Jake. You talk about false picks. I don't know if that's real. Uh, yeah. So um, this is kind of dig into, generally speaking, um, the, the Tasco definitely had some fault, a lot of false picks. Mm -hmm. um, it looked like it was driven by sun. the sun. Even though these were facing south, which I think most trail cameras say, hey, you're good south or north. It's east or west that you get in trouble. Um, it did. It seemed like the sun glare really caused some false uh, false images. Yeah. But um, yeah, again, thirty nine. I think thirty nine ninety nine. You can still buy the Tasco uh, versus fifty five dollars for the uh, Moultrie. A seven hundred. A seven hundred. So a little bit more money for it, but uh, you know, it depends on what you're looking for. But uh, you know, picture quality on the A seven hundred. I think compared to all of them. Daylight pictures are like photo quality, mm -hmm. photo camera quality. Um, you could frame them and put them on the wall, right? They're just that good. Um, and then we're calling the A700 good nighttime quality pictures. And the Tasco really struggled, as yep. you predicted, Jason. Especially distance wise, it seemed like past, even 30 feet seemed to be a push for it at mm -hmm. night. Uh, but when you got out past 30 feet, it was like it got dark. Pretty good. Right. Yeah. 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 So I think round one, A, A700i. A700i. Back to the bus. Back to the bus. <laughs> All right. So now we have our next two competitors. By the way, that A700i is probably a three year old camera, generation wise. Uh, might be four years, three to four years. So three to four years, that, that newer generation does have, from a technology perspective, does have an impact as well. Yep, yep. So um, the next, the other side of the bracket, um, we've got the Moultrie A25i, Jace, your camera, versus the autopilot replacement, the Bushnell L20. So that's probably the newest technology camera we have out of the four. Is that fair to say? I would say a two-year-old, uh, two and a half now. Let's okay. Say. Yeah. And I don't know how many. I'm going to say probably that two range, two to three range. Okay. So let's start with the A25i and um, two data sets here, combining them, um, approximately 550 images uh, for the Moultrie, and the Bushnell had um, over over a thousand. So about half. Half as many or twice as many, depending on which camera you're looking at, number of images taken. Um, the A25, I, I would say, Tim, I mean, your thoughts looking at the pictures, daytime pictures were a really good quality. Really good. I would, in fact, I would say at parity. Parity to the bush now. Yeah, you know, that there's something about the color of the A700i. That the, the pictures are brighter and the colors better on it, but uh, both these cameras did a good job during the day. But the A twenty five I did a great job um, for daytime pictures. Yeah, really good. Agree? Yep, I would agree. And is that your experience? Yeah, I think so. It? Yeah. Um, nighttime um, is is there was a significant difference between the two at, at nighttime. The A twenty five I was good. We called it okay. Uh, meaning that you know you could definitely tell if it was a buck or a doe. You could get some resemblance of points on the rack, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but the Bushnell was like very good. Like it, it almost was like a black and white picture, but mm. just crisp. Yeah, I would actually say. I mean, Jason and I were talking this or before we started the episode. Bushnell, I think, probably the best nighttime. Picture. Absolutely, and it's the range. It all comes down to that 30, 60, 90. 
the bush down really seemed to almost keep its quality throughout the night. Yeah, so the range, let's, let's go with that next. So 30-60-90 Bushnell hit all of them. For whatever reason, you know, the A25i did not get any of them. Mm. And I don't, I mean, we, we did them all at the same time. It wasn't like we did this 12 times, mm. 12 passes. It was once for all four cameras and once, for, so it, it, for whatever reason, but it was picking up deer, I would say that even if there was a mistake made by us on this, that it, it's good at 30 and 60, the 90 I think would be a little bit up in the air. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on that? I think you're right. I'm, as far as, you know, the 30, 60, once again, you know, I don't, I don't get to hunt any food plus, so I don't have any experience with anything real far away in my trail cameras. Yeah, good stuff. Now the Bushnell is our most expensive camera, even though it's still in that budget range. You can buy the L20 Bushnell uh, for seventy dollars. Uh, you probably get a little cheaper if you shopped around. I didn't spend a lot of time shopping around, but uh, for sure available, and, and it's uh, seventy bucks. A25i I could not find on the market. Uh, <laughs> I should take that back. I could buy one on eBay, but it was parts only, so you <laughs> right. don't want that, right? So I think. The A25i, they've moved on to, my guess would be maybe the 700s mm -hmm. or the 900s or something like that um, is the new series. All right. So I think the winner there is uh, the Bushnell. The Bushnell. We in agreement on that? Yep. On that? We're in agreement. So that puts us uh, in the Super Bowl uh, next episode with the uh, returning champ A700i versus the Bushnell uh, L20. And uh, see what we got. Any any predictions? Well, you know, you 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 brought up something that we haven't considered, right? So how do we factor in? And I'm not looking for an answer. Just think about this. How do we factor in price to quality, price to quality in pictures perspective? Now, I think our first year we came up with some big algorithm. I don't want us to go down that path, but but there is twenty dollars is not an insignificant difference in price. Right, so just something to think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. We'll have to work on that on the side, I guess. Maybe over a beer. Yep. Have to work on it. But uh, we are calling all four of these kind of budget budget cameras around the fifty to sixty dollar range, even though the Bushnell is just a little bit more um, from there. But uh, predictions, Jason, on these two. Well, <laughs> last time I predicted it didn't go very good, so. Uh, I tell you what, I think I'm going to go stick with the Moultrie, and for the simple fact being, a lot of the farms I hunt, I share permission on, and so if I had to pick, if just looking at them from looks, you know, if I'm buying these off the shelf, I like the form factor of this one, you know, a guy is a lot less likely to see this around a tree compared to this, you know, I mean, you could hide the Moultrie right behind it. So. It is almost half the size. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, that's I like the Moultrie. And I think the Moultrie has the uh, instructions on the inside yep. of the lid, which was uh, a big bonus. And I think it'd be hard for Tim to break this latch, so. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I thought the autopilot was safe too, Jace. It was not. It was not. Jake, you got a prediction? <sighs> Man, I hate to go against the Moultrie A700i. We'll, we'll see. I'm going with the Moultrie. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just a, a hardcore... Our cool good camera that's uh, that's proven itself, right? So simple and easy. We'll see. We'll see. We'll do some more testing on it and come back to these folks and uh, see what we found out. Yep. Anything we left out, guys? Um, before you know, we say goodbye. Not, not for me. Oop, I'm good. Till right. next time. Be safe. Stay safe. Have fun and get outdoors. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.